Welcome back to the Boston Institute of Finance's CFP Formula Series. I'm Jerry Mee with the Boston Institute of Finance, and in this video, we'll be covering correlation. But first, I want to cover why the provided formula sheet is so important. It's one of only three resources available to you during the CFP exam, the other two being your calculator and the provided tax tables. These formulas are incredibly important and provide a huge advantage when taking the CFP exam. Yet most students skip them entirely because they're intimidated by what looks like incredibly complex math. Our goal is to show you that these formulas are really not that scary and can be a great tool once you learn how to use them. In this video series, we'll be decoding each of the formulas and discussing their exam applications. In our last video, we discussed covariance and how it's used to measure the price changes and securities that are related to one another. In today's video, we'll be going a step deeper in incorporating correlation. Correlation is part of the covariance formula, and you can see it here. The formula to solve for correlation is not on the provided formula sheet itself, but we can easily figure it out by adjusting the covariance formula using basic algebra. As you can see, we move correlation to the left side of the equation and shift covariance into the numerator position on the right side of the equation. Take a look at these two formulas and notice that they are using the same basic variables in slightly different ways. Correlation is important because it is the more detailed version of covariance. Not only will it tell us if two securities move in the same direction as each other, it will also tell us how closely those securities will move in relation to one another. The correlation coefficient is a number on the scale of negative one to positive one. A correlation coefficient of positive one means that the securities will behave exactly the same as one another. A true coefficient of perfect positive one is very difficult to find in the real world. The closest we could probably get to it is a large benchmark ETF, such as an S&P 500 ETF, in relation to the actual S&P 500. Because of fees and commissions, the S&P 500 ETF won't perform exactly as well as the real S&P 500 would, so it's not a pure positive one correlation, but it's pretty darn close. A correlation coefficient of negative one means that the securities behave completely opposite of one another. When one security goes up, the other security goes down by exactly the same amount. One example of this would be shorting a security. Once again, due to margin fees and commissions, the short position will not be a perfect negative one correlation, but it also gets pretty close. Correlation coefficient of zero means that the two securities move completely random from one another and don't have any relationship. Now let's take a look and see how we can use correlation in building a portfolio. Suppose within this investment portfolio there are several holdings. Each holding has a different correlation in relation to one another. Now let's suppose the S&P 500 trends down. Not only do the assets have different levels of correlation in regards to each other, they also have different levels of correlation in response to the S&P 500. As a result, assets with a high positive correlation will trend downwards with the S&P 500, whereas other assets with a negative correlation will increase in value in response to the S&P 500 declining. Certain assets have gains, while other assets have losses. By making sure there's a variety of correlations between holdings within a portfolio, balance may be achieved in a variety of market conditions. This is an effective tool used by financial advisors to balance their clients' portfolios and avoid catastrophic losses. Balance is the key, and correlation lets us know how much weight is on each side of the scales. I hope you found this video helpful in your understanding of correlation. Keep an eye out for our next video as we tackle each of the CFP formulas in the Boston Institute of Finance's CFP formula series.